Hello, what's up, YouTube photographer Ronix Sweater and in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you the simple, basic things that you should understand about frequency separation. And I'm going to make you understand frequency separation very easily. And this is going to be a very easy, simple tutorial that is going to make you understand frequency separation from the very start to the very end with just few steps or techniques. So I just want to show you the basic things and I just want to simplify the concept of frequency separation in this tutorial. So hoping that you have hit the like button on this very video because when you do that it helps the video perform better and also helps the channel to grow in the long run. So this is the image that you are going to be dealing with and for purposes of demonstration I want to show you the basic things that you should understand about frequency separation. And if I told you I've as well been struggling with retaining skin texture in the images, this is a video for you. So the very first thing I have to take into consideration, you have to understand that frequency separation divides the image into the high frequency layer and the low frequency layer. The high frequency layer is going to contain the textures and the low frequency layer is going to contain our colors. So basically what we do or if I told you, you have always had a frequency separation action, when you play it, it automatically creates those layers for you. Then if at all you want to understand how to create those layers, we simply come to the background layer and we press Ctrl J twice to create those two layers. So we double click rename this to low frequency and you're going to name this to high frequency. Like I say, the high frequency layer is going to contain the textures, the low frequency light is going to contain the skin tones or the colors. So oftentimes, most people tend to go wrong when it comes to retaining the colors in this layer and I'm just going to be focusing more on that. So basically what I'm going to do, I'm just going to come and hide the high frequency layer. So this is the most misused step when it comes to retouching or using frequency separation as a skin retouching technique. So usually when you come to the low frequency layer, we come to filter and we come to blur and we come to Gaussian blur. So if at all you have an action for retouching or for frequency separation, it usually stops at this point when you have to determine the amount of blur that you want to apply onto the skin. So usually when you mess up on this step, it means that the textures you're going to be remaining with in the final image are going to be really not good and they're not going to be natural enough. So when it comes to this step of retaining skin texture, we want to blur out the textures from affecting the low frequency. Like I said at the start of the tutorial, this layer is meant to contain colors or the skin tones. So you have to use these tools, you zoom in and out, so you have to zoom in and look for an area that seems to have more textures. And for this case, the forehead right here has more textures than the skin. So for those that always struggle with retaining skin texture in your images, you have to come to the radius down here and simply left click and you start dragging. So you left click and hold down and you drag this towards the right hand side up to when you're just starting to lose out completely on those textures. So around seven, that is when I'm just starting to lose out on these textures in this image. So your image may be having different levels of skin textures or different levels of sharpening, meaning your radius may differ. Like I said, only move this radius up the point when the prominent or visible textures are just starting to disappear from this very image and stop at that point. Meaning the textures you lose out on this step are the ones that we're going to remain with in the final image and we're just going to come and hit OK. So it is going to apply that onto the overall image and you can notice that the image is going to turn out to look a little bit blurry and it's going to be lacking textures. So we come to the high frequency line now activate it. So if I told you have the action it automatically does this step for you. But if I told you a beginner and you are following along, let's do this from a beginner level so you come to the high frequency line and select it then you come to image and you come to apply image so usually we have 8 bit and 16 bit images so if i told you have 8 bit or if i told you have 8 or 16 it means that your image is going to be 8 bit or 16 bit respectively so at this point you have to 
only extract textures from the image and in order to do that we simply come to layer and we select low frequency layer the reason for this is because the textures we extracted from this layer we want to copy them and place them the high frequency that is why you have selected the low frequency layer then we're going to come to the channel and make sure we select rgb so after doing that if at all you have 8 right 8 means the image is going to be 8 bit and these settings are going to be different so if at all you have 8 right here this is what you have to follow along so after setting up these two options layer and channel to low frequency layer and rgb the blend mode for an 8-bit image is going to be subtract. Measure the opacity is 100 percent Preserve transparency and mask cannot check. The scale is 2 and offset 128. So measure you put in these values and measure that that option is not turned on. And with the preview checked, you can see the textures are on the gray kind of layer right here. But if at all you have a 16-bit image, or if at all you have 16, it means you select the low frequency layer and the channel is RGB and the blend mode for 16-bit image is going to be add or pass at 100%, preserve transparency and, ma and mask cannot check. The scale is 2 and offset so and make sure you turn on the invert option and you'll have the textures on this gray layer. So just come and click OK. So we want a blend mode that is going to bring back the image. So you come and change the blend mode from normal and change it all the way to linear light. So basically you have separated the image into the high frequency layer and the low frequency layer. So I'll select both layers by holding down control or the command key on the keyboard and I'll drag them and put them in a group. So you can see so when I turn off the image, you can see we literally have the same image. So if at all you have issues with understanding frequency separation and how to use different tools, let me just go in depth a little bit more. So like I said, when we blurred out the textures, we want to retain them in the final image. So we have various tools that we can use to retain skin textures. So the very first tool is going to be the mixer brush tool. So for this case, we are going to come to the brushes. You right click and get the mixer brush tool. And if at all you are having an older version of Photoshop, you may find your mixer brush tool down here. So these are the settings for the mixer brush tool that I would recommend. So for the hardness, make sure it is zero percent meaning the brush is going to be soft and make sure clean brush is selected and make sure the option which says clean the brush after each and every stroke has been selected because we don't want the brush to color from one area to another then the load is going to be 75 percent the mix at 90 and the flow of 100 percent and the weight value is going to be nine percent so weight is nine load 75 mix 90 flow 100 and make sure sample all layers Make sure that this option is not checked because when you are working with skin tones or when we are when we are using frequency separation to retouch we tend to first of all have even skin tone transition so with the missile brush tool setup we are going to come to the low frequency line now select it remember we only want to work on the information in the low frequency line. meaning when you check this option right here it means the brush is going to also sample information from all these two layers and when you start painting you can see that it is going to paint back textures in the selected layer which is the low frequency layer which we don't want you can see this annoying texture so i'm just going to press ctrl z to undo that so when it comes to mixing simply hide the high frequency layer and after hiding it you can reduce on the size of the brush by using the bracket keys on the keyboard so how to mix you simply left click and hold down and you drag and mix colors that are looking alike so make sure you retouch at a distance so when you turn off the texture you are going to be only looking at colors so make sure you mix in the direction of how an area is shaped so you can see forehead is shaped in this direction so i'll move the mr brush tool in this kind of direction while remaining in the borders or boundaries of that given area. So I'm just going to just mix this forehead area so that you can understand how the whole concept of frequency separation using the Mr. Brush tool works. Then if I told you Mr. Brush tool is showing a plus icon, you can simply press the caps lock key and that is going to deactivate that. So I'm just going to click just like that. So you left, you left click and hold down and you move the Mr. Brush tool 
and you mix colors that are looking alike so that you can create a nice transition and the advantage of hiding the high frequency layer it helps us to deal with colors alone so that we are not distracted with the textures within the image and the more plastic the image is getting the better the results from your frequency separation when you use the mesa brush tool so when it comes to the chin or the cheek area you reduce on the size and you mix colors so you have to move the strokes of the brush depending on the duration of how that area is shaped and you have to mix colors that are looking alike and you have to keep on reducing on the sizes of the mesa brush tool by using the bracket keys if at all you are using or if at all you're working on a small area so mix that and where the colors are transitioning from one color to another you can reduce on the size and you blend in that area so after doing that you can now come and turn on the texture layer and you can see the before after before and after you have still retained the original textures but as you're working on the image make sure you don't zoom all the way in because when you do this it means that you're not going to be seeing the uneven skin tone transitions or the color transitions within the image so make sure you use command plus and you retouch at, at a distance so the next the next tool rather that we're going to be looking at is going to be the lasso tool so when using the lasso tool we leave the texture layer turned on so after applying the mixer brush tool we simply come and we select the lasso tool right here or you can press l on the keyboard and that is the shortcut for the lasso tool so just click on it and make sure new selection mode is selected above here and the feathering is 22 pixels the reason for this is because when we make a selection on the skin so i have pressed q to bring up this mask right here so it means that the edges of the selection are going to be really smooth as opposed to i'm just going to press q to hide that mask as opposed to a feather of zero pixels so if at all the feather is zero and you make a selection on the skin i'm just going to press q and show you this you can see how sharp the edges are meant to be or they're going to be so we don't want those annoying lines from selections that we make on the skin so i'm just going to press q once again and click away from the selection to deselect or you can simply press ctrl d or command d to deselect so i'm just going to leave it to 22 pixels so that i i get smooth edges so 22 I'll type in 22 and simply press enter on the keyboard. So when it comes to this step, simply make a, a selection and you have to keep away from the eyebrows and the edges of the skin or even the hair. Keep within the skin area and you have to keep away from the edges. So when it comes to this step, simply come to filter. Then you come to blend, come to gush and blur. And when it comes to gush and blur, this is the previous radius that we had for our frequency separation. So you have to look at the image at a distance. So when it comes to this step, simply left click and move the radius as you're looking at the image and the skin tones in general. So you have to stop at the point when the textures are still intact and the skin tones have really been blended quite well. So at around 20, that is when I'm having a very good skin texture and a blended skin color. So you have to stop at that point and don't overtake it overboard because that is going to make the image look weird so just going to undo that so the other trick that you can use if at all you're unsure remember we had a radius of seven pixels so this radius that we had when we were separated the frequencies of the image just multiply that radius by three so if at all you have maybe if at all you use six multiply six by three and you type in 18 that value so for my case it is 7 so 7 by 3 is 21 so just type in 2 1 and you can see that gives me a natural and realistic skin tone variation and also the texture and i'll just come and hit ok so after applying that you can just come deselect by clicking away from the selection and just come right click make a new selection and apply your Gaussian blur. So right click and come to Gaussian blur. And when it is too much, simply right click on the selection and come to fade Gaussian blur and simply reduce on the opacity of that effect. So that is how you can do this. The, then the other mistake I tend to see when it comes to the nose area, most people tend to select the whole nose 
in general so and apply the Gaussian blur so what that does it is going to take away the nice and beautiful shape of the nose and it's going to make it flat and look big so what you have to do basically you're just going to control z to undo so what when it comes to the nose simply apply it to the shadow area right click and come to Gaussian blur and also apply it to other another shadow area right click and come to Gaussian blur so when it comes to the highlight simply apply the same thing but simply reduce on the opacity by right click and come into fade Gaussian blur and simply reduce on this so basically this is how you can apply it so I'm just going to undo that so this is how you can do frequency separation and after you have done this Remember to remove blemishes by coming to a high frequency line and simply getting whatever tool that you prefer to use. So for my case, I prefer to use the clone stamp tool. So I'll just come and make sure the mode is no more. Opacity at 100 percent flat 100 percent and make sure the hardness is set all the way to zero. And the sample has to be current layer because we want to deal with the blemishes that are part of the high frequency line. Now you can reduce on the size using the bracket keys on the keyboard and how to remove the blemish you have to zoom all the way in and how to remove a given blemish hold down the option key on the keyboard or the alternate key on the keyboard and you can simply left click to copy from a clean area and make sure it is slightly bigger than the blemish and simply click over it to remove that blemish so you hold down the alternate key on the keyboard and you left click on an area that is close to the blemish and release the alternate key on the keyboard and simply left click once again to replace that blemish so this is how you can use the clone stamp tool to remove blemishes from the image and this is how you can easily understand frequency separation from the very start to the very end and this is the before so this is the before and this is the after before after so this is how you can easily understand frequency separation from the very start to the very end and if at all you have learned a thing or two from this video, don't forget to like it and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. If at all you have been watching and you're not subscribed yet to this channel, Ronix from Ronix Photography. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in yet more amazing tutorials. And don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating.